All right, here we go. Inkscape Concepts Part 3. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk about this thing called Outer Perimeter. It's also called Auto 99. And I'll, I'm going to really confuse you because I want to give you the history of where that 99 came from. There used to be a concept called Whole 99. And you might have seen in my Inkscape, and I'll show you here in a second, that I have this hole called a 99. Hole 99 was always on the very bottom, so everything cut down through it. It was a concept that um, you needed to have one shape that encompassed all your other shapes and they would all cut through it. Um, since the updates to the entire process, hole 99 has been deprecated. It was causing some issues. But um, <laughs> the outer perimeter was called an auto 99 because it filled in the areas that your hole 99 did not. All right, so you're confused now. I'm going to show you what this is in a second, okay? Outer perimeter, okay, this auto 99, is what we're defining is the area between the Inkscape shapes you draw and the edge of your square terrain border. And let me just show you that right now. It is this area out here, okay? Uh, so you can see there's a satellite image out there. Um, this will get a mesh on it. So you send this through Glenda later, uh, later on, it will create a mesh and automatically, that's why we call it an auto 99, uh, to fill out this area. So you don't need to fill out shapes all the way to the edge of your terrain. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't. We're going to talk about that in the best practices. Okay. So this area that looks like satellite out here, which is just my satellite image, will be populated later on in Glenda with an area called your um outer perimeter or auto 99. so going back here it is a single material okay um it's typically assigned deep rough but it can be defined by you so it is um it's a single material but it's also broken up a little bit for performance reasons um so you can make it deep rough you can make it a fair way remember what i said about being able to make, manipulate this inch you can make it whatever you want um, but it's typically defined as deep rough, and you can choose what you want it to be. It's typically assigned a satellite image for appearance. So in, in my case, what I just showed you, um, I'm, I'll put the satellite overlay in here because it's not just a, an empty open field. It's actually an urban area. So uh, that's what I want it to appear in the way off distance. Now, keep in mind that this stuff is uh, most of it is very far away from the golfer's perspective now this stuff over here will be somewhat close across the street so i might put some buildings and things in here but again those buildings are completely independent from the mesh and the appearance of the mesh itself okay um you should not be reachable by a golf ball okay the general thumb is um you should not be able to reach it with a golf ball it's not a big deal if it does but actually what i'm saying is like if you wonder where your outer perimeter should start that's the area that shouldn't be reachable by a golf ball. Um, that area is added automatically later on in the Clender process. So when you submit your SVG, your Inkscape file to Clender, Clender will say, hey, what do you want for your, uh, your outer perimeter, your outer 99? You can say, I want it to be deep rough. And boom, there it is. It's done. It's added automatically for you. Um, long way of saying it, but you don't need to spline every single area of your terrain perimeter in Inkscape. Okay. So bottom line is, so you can see what I spline here. There's this outer, uh, this, you know, these aren't one shape here. Let me just show you. These are multiple shapes. You can see I turned that one on and off. So these are just smaller, deep, rough areas that I have been drawing. The bottom line is you do not need to spline every single square meter of your terrain, okay? And nor should you. As a matter of fact, you want a gap, okay, around here. The bigger, actually, the better. This is getting a little close, but it's fine. If you spline something and it overlaps and it goes over top of your terrain edge down here, you're going to get some errors. Okay, so don't do that. Um, that's it. Ah, good. This one was less than five minutes. So if you're drinking a beer, you had to do that one really quick. On to the next video.